Hello everyone, welcome to Self Love You. This is a channel where we learn and talk about how to love ourselves more, how to love ourselves for the first time, how to find ourselves, how to become self-aware, and how to take good care of ourselves emotionally, mentally, and physically. Today I want to do a show on the topic of how to get out of a relationship that is narcissistic and painful to you. I get a lot of emails from people on a daily basis, people telling me that they are in situations, they are in relationships that are unhealthy, that they need to get out of, that they know they need to get out of. And this really breaks my heart because I definitely understand being in that position. I understand what it's like to be in an abusive relationship. Whenever I was younger, I was in abusive relationships. Even as an adult, as you know, being older, I've been in relationships that weren't healthy. And so I really understand what it's like to be stuck in a situation where you're not being treated properly. Here's the deal, and, and, and this video is really, I'm, I'm talking directly to you, those of you who are sending me emails and telling me that my videos are really helpful to you, and you're telling me that they're helping you and that they're actually sustaining you emotionally as you are hurting and going through a breakup or trying to be strong to break up with someone who is unhealthy for you. I don't really know how to explain exactly how I went from being someone who was abused by people to being someone who is strong and who can walk away from abuse, but I can try my best to share with you what I know and maybe this information will help you along your healing journey. For First of all, the, the problem is, is that when we are in relationships where other people are being harmful to us or hurtful to us, it means that we are not loving ourselves. It's simple as that. It's, it's, a, it's a difficult road to learn to love yourself, to go from someone who doesn't love yourself to go to someone who does. It, it's a difficult road to get there, but it's as simple as saying, someone, if you're, not, if you're allowing someone to treat you poorly, then that means that you don't love yourself, that you need to learn to love yourself. Along my healing journey, here's what, here's, here's what happened, <clears throat> okay? I was in relationships, not just romantic relationships, but friendships that were painful to me, family relationships that were unequal, that were not respectful to me as a person. And I had to learn what the very first thing I had to do was learn what my rights are as a human being. That was like literally one of the first things. The, the two first things I did was learn what my rights are. I literally went on to Google and I Googled, what are my rights? Because I knew I had some, I just didn't know what they were. And this is, um, you know, going on seven years ago. I wanted to know what my rights were because as a child, I was not properly raised to understand that I have rights. I have rights. I have rights to set boundaries. I have rights to make my own decisions. I have the rights to say my, what's on my mind. I have rights to be who I am. And nobody can tell me who to be, how to be, or that who I am is not correct or not right. So that's one of the first things I had to do is understand that I have rights. And I had to learn to assert my rights. And it took me a long time. I started doing that, learning how to be assertive when I was in my 20s. I had to because I was being bulldozed from here to Tallahassee. I mean, I had no backbone growing up into adulthood. I grew up with no backbone, with none. I did not know my rights. I did not know how to set boundaries. I did not assert myself. I took blame for everything. I was, I felt ashamed. I felt hurt. So the very first thing I had to do is learn that I am a human being and I am worthy of love. And I learned that everybody that is alive on this planet that is breathing, if you have breath, that means you are worthy. 
And that means you have equal worth to every single person on this earth. Now, it took a long time for me this to soak in. I learned it, and then it took forever for it to soak into my spirit. And I'm still learning it today, but I know it now. And so I'm still catching things today, but I know it now. And you cannot take away what I know. The second important thing about learning to love myself and learning how to get out of abusive relationships, I had to learn who I was. This sounds so ridiculous because if you hadn't seen me before I knew who I was, you would have thought I was a person who knew who I was. I was very successful in business. I drove a Porsche, whoopty poop, but I had one. But I still had no idea who I was. Let me tell you what I mean whenever I say knowing who you are. This is a Self Love You channel. Self Love You stands for Self Love University, okay? This is part of her learning how to love yourself, learning what your feelings are. So whenever I went into my counselor's office about seven years ago or so, and I said, hi, you know, I'm going through this. People are hurting me. I'm in pain. This is happening. This is happening. You know, the first thing that she had to do was she had to help me to see that I didn't know myself, that I wasn't even aware of how I was feeling. In, in fact, she told me I was angry. She said, you seem angry. Here I was, the victim I was complaining because someone had hurt me. Someone had said something that was painful to me. And I was complaining to this therapist. And she said, rather than sympathizing with me, rather than playing into my victim mentality, which is what I had, with good reason, I was being treated like dirt because I had no boundaries. I didn't even know what I, who I was. So you can't have boundaries if you don't know who you are. And she said something so profound to me. Here I was complaining that someone had said something to me at a party and it felt uncomfortable. And I was complaining to her. And she said, you seem angry. And I said, and in my heart of hearts, I did not feel angry. I didn't even feel angry. In fact, when I started to investigate what she told me, I was pissed. First of all, I was mad at her. How dare she tell me I'm angry? I'm not angry. <laughs> That's how I felt. I was like, screw you, lady. What kind of therapist are you? You're sitting here telling me I'm angry. I'm not angry. I'm not angry at all. I don't feel... Angry. And I just closed my journal. And then I pondered on that. And it took a while. I pondered on the fact that maybe I am angry. Now, let me promise you, this took years to come out. But that woman sat there and bravely told me while I was being the sweetest victim on in town. And I was, I mean, literally, I deserve some, some sympathy here, some compassion. Because I, I was really going through a lot. But if you're not in touch with your anger, then you're not going to be able to set boundaries. I needed to be in touch with my anger. But somewhere along the road, somewhere along my upbringing, I was taught that it's not okay to be angry and that it's not okay to, to, to be in touch with my feelings. And, and I'm just going to bring up anger because it's so darned important, especially for setting boundaries and especially for getting out of bad relationships. You need to know all your feelings. And if you're in a negative relationship where you're being treated like dirt, the chances are you don't know any of your feelings really. You think you do. But there's a bunch of stuff that's subconscious that you're not getting. You're not attached. You're not connected inside of yourself to your truth, to your true self. So that has to be the very bottom. You need to know you have rights. And then you need to be connected to your feelings, connected to your truth. So I did a video about this. You can look in my past videos. A couple videos back I did, I talked about feelings. But now I'm giving you more specifics. So here I was in this therapist's office. And she's like, you seem angry. And she wasn't nice about it. And I needed niceness. But she wasn't nice. Sometimes along the pathway to healing, you need to hear the truth. And the truth is not very fun. And it's not very pleasant. And, and I didn't want to know that I was angry. I felt bad for being angry. 
I felt like angry people are bad. But along the path of learning, I realized that anger is a protective mechanism. It is there to protect you from mistreatment, maltreatment. It's there to tell you that there has been an injustice that has occurred. So this therapist was actually helping me to get in touch with my own anger that I was not, that I was disassociated from. I, I was angry and didn't even know it. You, you, any, the, the soul, the spirit, the, the source inside of us, the higher self, whenever we are harmed or hurt, we automatically are built to feel angry. Anger is a protected feeling. It's not a negative feeling. Anger is a good thing. You want it. Now, anger turned into rage can turn into negative thing. So what you want to do is be in touch with your anger. You want to rein in your anger by allowing it to exist and questioning what's going on. So, you know, if you're in a relationship with a negative person who is abusing you, cheating on you, lying to you, harming you, sadistically busting your boundaries, beating you up, treating you poorly, ignoring you, you have got to have some anger in you. There's got to be some pent up anger inside. And that anger, you've got to come and connect with that anger so that you can have power. Your anger is your power. Your anger gives you motivation to protect yourself. And anger is not a bad emotion. This is turning into a video about anger. Anger is not a bad emotion. People think, oh, I'm angry, I need to hide that. Or, she was angry. That's such a bad thing. No, it's not bad. Angry means that you have been harmed. So if you feel anger, that means you need to look around and see who's harming you. So for me, my anger was misplaced because it wasn't okay as a child for me to feel anger. Anger was not allowed, okay? I was abused as a child by a mean stepfather who would not allow me to feel any feelings. Anger, oh my gosh, not at all. Like, I wasn't even allowed to be happy, much less angry. Angry? Oh yeah, right. I had to pretend like I was happy even as he was giving me whippings. I had to not be angry. So all that anger held inside of me, okay? I wasn't taught I was allowed to feel angry. I wasn't taught that anger is a normal emotion there to protect you. My anger wasn't honored. None of me was honored. And all of that causes the human soul to feel angry. When you're being squished like that, when you're being annihilated, when your soul is being murdered in that way, which is what it is, it causes the natural reaction of anger because anger is a natural reaction to injustice. So if you're feeling this anger, but I had anger, but I was never allowed to feel it. I was never connected. I was never taught that, hey, anger is an okay feeling. It's okay to be angry. You know, you don't always get to hit your mom or dad, but it's okay to have anger. Anger is a healthy emotion that helps you throughout life. So I was disconnected from my anger. So disconnected from my anger made it easier for people who were exploitative to get through because I didn't know I was angry. In fact, the anger kind of turned inward onto myself. And that's what causes depression. And that's what causes um, people to commit suicide. That causes suicidal tendencies. That's the most horrible thing is whenever you're loathing yourself. Okay, now that I'm on this topic of anger, this is such an important topic, and it's such an integral part of healing and protecting yourself. So a lot of times whenever you're a child and you're harmed over and over again, or even once, and you've never been able to express your anger because you always have to smile and be happy for the parent. That's just the parents want you to be happy, and the child will do anything to make the parents happy, including swallowing their anger including dissociating from their anger, what happens is, is you get a bunch of rage built up, okay? And you, then you can have a personality that is just angry all the time, and you don't know it. You don't even know that you're angry. 
And what can happen is, is you can do things like blow off into a rage for no reason because you have all this angry anger pent up. You can also do things that are very passive aggressive, like gossip, like harm other people, do sadistic things. For me, I think my anger would come in in terms of playing the victim. I think the victim mentality is a bunch of anger, pent up anger, and it's anger turned in upon the self. That's really what I think it's all about. But the key is, is getting in touch with anger and knowing when you are angry. It took me a long time, a long time, and I still have to work on when I'm really angry. Am I angry? Why am I angry? I'm feeling this. I'm feeling this way. What does this mean? It's kind of like taking a switchboard where, you know, in the olden days when they had like the switchboard and they had that lady that would be like, Hello, this is the operator. And she would go... And she would connect, <laughs> she would connect the, the lines. You kind of have to do that with yourself internally. Like, okay, why am I slamming the book like that? Why am I in my closet? I used to do this. I hated hangers in my closet and I would just, <laughs> that's anger. That's frustration, but it's coming from somewhere. It can be anger that's coming from your past childhood that needs to be released. It can that can happen. In that case, you need to do things like um, get your anger out. You know, you can scream. There's all kinds of ways to get your anger out, get the angries out. Or it could be you're angry about something that someone has done and you need to set a boundary or you need to say no or you need to walk away or you need to take care of yourself in some way. It could be you're angry about a relationship that's that you think is fine, but really you're angry about it. So we're talking about getting in touch with your feelings. And I don't know why this is kind of a rambling video, but I think I got a lot of good information out about your angry, your anger and learning to that you have rights and learning that angry, being angry is not a bad thing and learning to connect the anger with the true source like if you're having rage attacks right now and you just get angry about stuff and you don't even know why, I've known people where this happens, then you've got to connect. It's only when you connect the true reason you're angry that you'll be able to resolve that anger. And then as an adult, you need your anger to guide you and to help you to make decisions and to set boundaries and to protect your rights. So my answer to people that are in negative relationships and being abused and really wanting out. One of the first things you want to do is learn your rights. The next thing you want to do is get in touch with your feelings, starting with anger, getting to know yourself, getting to really feeling when you're angry. And instead of blaming yourself and saying, Oh, I've done this again. And look what I've done saying, look here, MF don't curse at me. No, I'm just kidding. You don't, you want to be careful. You want to protect yourself, but you want to let that anger rise up and to protect you because that's what it's there for. That's what anger is there for, is to protect you. I am Jenna Ryan. Love your comments. Love your emails. Love the fact that you're working hard on yourself to get well and to get out of negative relationships. That makes me very happy and to become the best person that you can be because you deserve love, your own love, first of all. Until next time, I will talk to you soon.